All right, so with the NFL draft quickly approaching, the Eagles are reportedly really pushing to try and trade up for one of the draft's top cornerbacks. And this player would be a perfect fit for the Birds' defense and would instantly become what the Eagles hope to be their cornerback of the future. So can Howie pull this off? Meanwhile, cornerback Isaiah Rogers has finally been reinstated by the NFL, so just how great of an addition will he be to the Birds' defense? Plus, the Eagles are still being investigated by the NFL for tampering, so could that end up affecting them in the draft? Well, we're going to talk about that and all the other latest Eagles news in this video today, and we won't waste anytime let's get straight into it so with it being draft week right now it's kind of fun to briefly look back at previous drafts to see how things played out for the eagles and safe to say that four years ago today for the birds was a pretty great draft moment as during the second round of the 2020 nfl draft the philadelphia eagles selected quarterback jalen hurts with the 53rd overall pick which was met with a lot of backlash from the eagles fan base at the time including myself i must admit but fast forward to just a short amount of time later and now we all love jalen he's our franchise quarterback the face of the franchise and safe to say that that was a fantastic pick by Howie Roseman, so happy four-year anniversary of that moment, which, depending on how Jalen's career pans out, could be looked back at as one of the best Eagles draft moments of all time. But fast forward to today, and the Eagles are currently dealing with a problem. And that problem comes in the form of an NFL investigation surrounding the Eagles organization and possible tampering that may have occurred directly between Eagles general manager Howie Roseman and Saquon Barkley during the legal tampering period just before the start of free agency, which, during that legal tampering period, is illegal because during that time, the player cannot directly speak with teams or GMs as things are required to go through the player's agents instead. Now, all this started back when Barkley's college coach and James Franklin hinted at a conversation directly between Barkley and Roseman, but he came out later and said that those comments were misinterpreted and he really meant that the Eagles talked to Barkley's agent rather than Barkley himself. And Saquon also said the same thing in his first press conference as an Eagle, but nonetheless, this investigation still is now going on because of that. And this has been a little worrying for the Eagles and their fans because typically in these situations where a team is found guilty of tampering, what ends up happening is that they're docked a draft pick or two. So with the draft coming up, this is really, really important because if found guilty before then, it could cost the Eagles a pick or maybe even more than that. However, it seems like that's not going to happen with Adam Schefter recently giving an update on the situation saying, quote, the league's review into tampering allegations against the Falcons and Eagles is ongoing and will not conclude this week per the NFL. So that's good news for the Eagles, at least for this upcoming draft, because even if they are found guilty of tampering, which, in my totally unbiased opinion, they didn't do anything wrong, and Franklin's comments were probably just misinterpreted, but even if they are found guilty, it's not going to affect their draft picks this year, and it would likely then affect them for the 2025 draft, but for now, we're safe, so that's definitely a good thing. But now, staying on the topic of league matters, the NFL also just did something else that affects the Eagles, and it's pretty great, as after the uncertainty of cornerback Isaiah Rogers not being reinstated by the NFL last week, along with many others who were, we just got the update we've all been waiting for, with Adam Schefter reporting, quote, the NFL reinstated Philadelphia's Isaiah Rogers, who was suspended for the 2023 season for violating the NFL's gambling policy. He may participate in all team activities effective immediately. So this is obviously great news because Rodgers is just a really talented player who's been very productive on the field during his time with the Colts. In 2022, he was the 5th ranked overall cornerback and 6th ranked cover corner in the entire NFL according to PFF, plus he had 3 interceptions back with them during 2021, so he definitely does have some ability, and he's definitely one of the more underrated cornerbacks in the league, and with James Bradbury obviously looking the way that he did last year, there's a very real chance that Rodgers comes in and takes over his spot and beats him out as the Eagles cornerback number 2, so that's definitely very exciting in my opinion, and Rodgers himself is also obviously very excited about this as he's been posting workouts during his time off and just keeping himself ready and now that he's officially been reinstated he just posted this video to his social media Overall, I just cannot wait to see Isaiah Rodgers out on the field because I really do think he's going to end up being a great addition to this Eagles defense, and I think he'll end up making a difference this year. And speaking of adding to the defense, it's looking more and more like that's exactly what the Eagles are going to do early in this upcoming draft, as more reports have come out leaking the Eagles' potential draft plans for the first round. Now, all this week, we've heard that Howie Roseman and the Birds may be looking to move up for a cornerback, and they've been calling teams trying to get deals in place to do that. And now, since those reports have come out, we've gotten more confirmation that the Eagles really do want to go get a cornerback in the first round first with daniel jeremiah coming out and saying this on john clark's takeoff podcast it's interesting the the thing that's helped me the most in in trying to navigate around or at least have an educated guess of what these teams are going to do the best place to call is the school to find out like talk to the position coaches at the school and then find out okay what's what teams have been doing the most homework on your guys and i'll just put it this way the philadelphia eagles have done a lot of work on corners uh, so that's what I'll, I'll leave you with that one. 
So that's definitely pretty telling as to what the Eagles are planning to do. And then on top of that, we have another report that gives us even more insight and specifics, as not only was it revealed which cornerback prospect that the Eagles could be after in particular, but it also has revealed what team they're trying to trade up with. As Tony Pauline just wrote an article discussing all the latest draft news around the NFL, and he said that the Eagles' desired cornerback in this draft is top prospect Quinion Mitchell, and he also elaborated more, saying, quote, As of Tuesday afternoon, I'm told the Eagles are speaking with the Denver Broncos about trading for the 12th selections, so they can draft the Toledo cornerback. The Broncos in turn would receive the Eagles pick in the first round, 22nd selection, which they would use to draft quarterback Bo Nix, a strategy I outlined on Monday. The Eagles have a pair of picks in round two and would part with one of them to move up to the Broncos spot. Now, he then went on to say that the Steelers are also trying to trade with the Broncos to move up for Mitchell as well, and them and the Eagles are kind of competing to make this move. So overall, I think that this is really, really interesting. I mean, for one, Quinion Mitchell is a guy who I think is gonna end up being a really good player at the NFL level. He's the top cornerback in this draft class, and that's for good reason. I mean, the guy is an athletic freak, and if you turn on the tape, he just jumps off it. He's just a playmaker in the secondary that has great ball skills. He's fantastic in both man and zone, but in zone particularly, he's just amazing, meaning he'd be a perfect fit into Vic Fangio's defense. And he's also a very good tackler against receivers and has shown flashes of physicality. On 2023, he had 14 pass breakups and allowed just a QB rating of 49 when targeted. So obviously, He's a very good player. He definitely still has some room for improvement, and he still does have to polish his game a little bit, but that also goes for any rookie coming into the NFL, and I do think he could come in and also contribute right away in his rookie season. Now, my one main concern with him is that he played at Toledo, so he wasn't always facing the best competition, which has led some people to favor some of the other SEC prospects, as drafting those guys that seem to work out for the Eagles in recent years, but at the end of the day, I really still do think that Mitchell is just that talented and athletic that he'll end up being a very good player, so I would love for the Eagles to go get him. That being said, Said, though, it seems like based on Pauline's report, the birds are going to have to give up a good amount of compensation to land him if they want to do that trade up with the Broncos. I mean, moving up from 22 to 12 is obviously a big jump, so it's going to require a good amount of compensation. But I mean, just giving up one of the two second rounders that we have is a very hefty price. But if the Eagles are 100% sure that Quinion Mitchell is a guy that's going to end up being really, really good and the lockdown cornerback of the future for this team, then maybe it'd be worth it to sacrifice one of those seconds. But then again, on the other hand, I feel like that second round pick could definitely be a guy that is able to come in and contribute in year one and if not that then maybe you sit him for a little bit but he develops and he ends up turning into a really really good player for this team down the road and then the Eagles could just sit at 22 in the first round and get another one of the really good cornerback prospects that are in this draft if they wanted to do that so I don't know you guys can let me know what you think down in the comments would you trade one of the second rounders they got to move up and get Quenyon Mitchell or do you think they should just stay at 22 now in addition to that report we also got even more insight on the Eagles draft strategy and how they're scouting players as Howie Roseman just recently had an interview with John Clark where he hinted that the Eagles may kind of have an open door policy to where some of the players on the team are even getting involved in the draft process and scouting guys that they like and giving recommendations. Like, just listen to this. You mentioned Jason Kelsey looked at some guys like Cam Jurgens. Do you have players on this team right now that are coming to you with tapes of guys or telling you I like this guy? Yeah, I, th I think it's, just, I, it's, it's like I opened this door and now all of a sudden, you know, everyone wants to scout. And, but you know what? I love that our players are interested in the evaluation process. So with that in mind, you just have to think about whether someone like Darius Slay is giving his insight on the different cornerback prospects and what he sees from them. And then you also have to remember that just because these reports are coming out that are really heavily suggesting that the Eagles are gonna take a cornerback in the first round, it doesn't necessarily mean that they will. They can still definitely target other positions. I mean, I've talked on this channel about how the Eagles have showed a lot of interest in offensive linemen and tackles leading up to the draft. So maybe Lane Johnson is weighing in on that and giving insight on which guy he would like to to see as his potential replacement, which if I'm going to speculate even further, I'm thinking it'd be Oklahoma's Tyler Guyton as the two Oklahoma tackles have had a big brother, little brother type of relationship for a bit now. And Lane has also praised Guyton and his ability in the past. Or maybe the Eagles could be looking at edge rushers. And in that case, Brandon Graham is then giving his insight into which prospect he thinks would be best for the Eagles. He's obviously heading into his last year. So maybe he wants to help find a guy that's going to make a huge impact for the birds moving forward. And in that case, you got guys like Alabama's Dallas Turner, who they may want to trade up for as the insanely talented rush linebacker and fantastic pass rusher could be someone the Eagles have their eye on. Or maybe UCLA's Liatu Latu, who I really, really like, could be an option. He's the top-ranked defensive end in this class who's just an absolute playmaker and a great pass rusher. Or maybe the Georgia Bulldogs in the Eagles roster make their case for the versatile safety Javon Bullard, who I've seen linked to Philly a lot in the pre-draft process. And he's a guy that could come in and be utilized in a number of different ways in the secondary and eventually become a big piece for the defense. So I don't know. There's a lot of different ways this could go for the Eagles as they move towards the draft as they got plenty 
of options to choose from, and I'm just really, really excited to see who they end up getting. Now, I'm going to be covering the draft and breaking it all down here on this channel, so if you don't want to miss any of that or just other Eagles coverage coming throughout this entire offseason and moving into the future after that, make sure you subscribe and also really, really importantly, turn on notifications so you're notified instantly when any of these videos are uploaded. And also, while you're at it, make sure you drop a like down below on this video to show some support and leave a comment down below just regarding anything that I talked about in this video. And if you want to watch another Eagles video going over some more recent Eagle news, including a potential AJ Brown extension coming in the near future, you can check this out right here. And now, with all that being said, that's pretty much all I got for this one, guys. So thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.